In today's Elden Ring video, we'll take a look at 6 great Ashes of War that are much stronger as a result of the newest update. We've seen how many skills and weapons got buffed just recently and how well this enables new and interesting kind of build ideas that we didn't necessarily had before. So today we're gonna take a look at some of these, how you can also implement them in your build and how to make the most out of them after update 1.04. Now starting right up, let's begin with the Flaming Strike. In the newest update 1.04, from software increase the travel distance of the stepping cleave strong attack that you can follow up after the initial cast. Basically the follow up R2 now has a much longer reach than before and thus can be used to hit enemies much further away. This is basically how you'll want to play with this immediately after the initial cast you will want to follow up with the R2 heavy to perform that faster sweep of the weapon which is also going to imbue it with more fire damage. Now since this comes with a fire affinity by default it's great for strength builds with heavier weapons since you're also getting more stuns in the process the only thing to keep in mind is that this won't work for obvious reasons with colossal weapons but it totally does with great axes or great hammers in this case the great stars is what i was using so pairing this with a heavy weapon also makes sense because you can stun enemies more easily not just from the initial fire cast but also from the follow-up sweep it takes about two full cycles to fully stun one of these bigger brute targets it's not going to be as fast as the red mains which i believe only takes like a couple of casts but it's a lot more reliable it's always going to proc on that fourth hit so it's quite a nice and consistent way of applying damage and quite a bit of stagger now the next ash of war to have received a buff was the loser shaker i believe there's a play on words that yeah from software is pulling on us here with this one but yeah in the new update they've increased the cast speed, the cast speed on the follow-up input and decrease recovery rate. So this means it's much faster to cast and much spammier than ever before, especially on the follow-ups it's almost instantaneous. So this went from being a great AoE and stun in the previous updates to being a, well, amazing all-arounder in the newest one as it deals huge damage, stagger and now it's, well, just easier to cast. It scales best when using high strength scaling weapons with heavy affinities and in that case he can deal way over 2k damage which is the first stomp and the second one is going to be even higher than that so totally worth it. A good thing to note about this is that its initial roar animation does interrupt enemies even in the middle of their charge so it's a good way to stop them and this will leave them open for the upcoming stomps. Now despite the initial roar being a roar it doesn't benefit from the roar talisman but it does strangely enough benefit from the rotten winged sword insignia and and other similar talismans that have per successive attack boosts, like in this case even Millicent's Prestasis seems to work with this. Finally, hybrid builds can also work with it at spreading the Blood Flame Blade effect or the Black Flame Blade effect. In this case, I'm using the Blood Flame and as you can see, it also procs a bleed or a blood loss in this case against the enemy, but it does take like 2 or 3 stomps before that happens. It's still good to have if you want to play it that way. Now moving on to number 3, the next one is going to be Lion's Claw which has seen its cast speed increased and the recovery time has been decreased. So this was already amazing in the previous updates, well now it's again much spammier and faster to cast, even chain cast compared to before 1.04. This was already an amazing option with colossal weapons that had long reach like for example God's Greatsword, well now it takes way less to cast it so it's an even more solid option even in in the end game. It definitely feels like something that shines early and mid but yeah the high damage definitely carries you way into the end game and it can be a solid option to also stun enemies. One thing to note here is that you can no longer be interrupted during its cast like pretty much you're solid throughout the entirety of the animation which can be both an upside and a downside. The upside is that you don't have to worry about getting interrupted, the downside is that if there's any attack connected connecting with your character, you can obviously die if you're not being too careful, which is why I recommend running this with a high vigor build. I especially enjoy using this against bosses where the strategy is to just hug them since that just avoids like 90% of their attacks and gives you an easier time dodging. It's definitely worth it in that case also because of the way the animation works, your character kind of bows down initially so that oftentimes has saved me from getting any damage on my 
my character so it can be an effective dodge tool that can also follow up with the massive attack on it and the stagger again is amazing against bosses like Godfrey or Malekith but it's probably going to be amazing against others too. Moving on to number 4 the next one is Carrion Grandeur this had its cast speed increase and the recovery time has been decreased but yeah the damage when the charge up happens also made it easier to cause enemies to flinch as a result of the new update. Now if you're familiar with the Blasphemous Blade or anything similar to that this is basically the intelligence equivalent of those skills. We can charge up an overhead carry an attack that deals more damage the more you charge it and covers a lot more distance but obviously it's not going to be as far reaching as something like the Blasphemous Blade. It's still a solid option that extends your reach by quite a bit and in the new update it deals a ton of flinching to say the least. I know the patch notes specifically refer to just that but I found this to be an amazing way to just put enemies on their bellies even with the first initial charge of the three levels that this skill has by default. So you can totally use that strategically in case the enemy will reach you and you don't have time to fully charge all the three levels up you can just unleash the first one or two and it's still going to deal pretty much almost the same amount of poise damage as the other one which is a difference of just five points from 25 to 30 against the fully charged one so still totally worth it. In this case you can use it with all sorts of builds you can use it with a full like strength build in this case with a minimal investment into intelligence just to have this affected on the weapon and even with a heavy affinity it's still dealt a ton of damage. I would assume that if you switch to a high intelligence build you're probably going to deal a lot more damage with the spell component on it. Moving on to number 5 another great option previously was the gravitas especially early on for both mages and hybrids likewise that also used well large weapons in this case. In the new update they've increased the cast speed on it and personally it feels as if it's been cut to half of what it was before or at least by like 50% faster than how it was in the previous update. So now it's a lot spammier easy to cast and it was already a solid option with the high AoE area of effect that it unleashes. Having it faster also brings in a few interesting choices now one of which is spreading status effects much easier. This is similar to the stomp we talked about previously so if you use it with a non-magic affinity you can apply something like the blood flame blade or black flame blade to spread the damage over time component of those to every single enemy affected in that large area. So quite nice to say the least. And this brings us finally to the last one, the Black Flame Tornado Ash of War. They've added a hitbox to the weapon when spinning it and also added a window to roll during the attack to cancel the animation, which I think is very welcomed. Previously, the weapon spin itself would not deal any damage, only like the fire outside the circle of it did. So now you can also use it when enemies are very close to you inside of the circle basically and you will still deal that damage and also like flinch them with all the subsequent spins which I think is really great. This effect works the same for both the Godskin Peeler variant that comes with it by default as well as the Ash of War variant that you get from the Godskin duo later on in the game but I think the Godskin Ash of War variant is much better since you can apply it on weapons that might have larger reaches like in this case something like a scythe like this one that is a little bit bigger so the hitbox is also going to affect a larger area. Anyway this is it with the video now if you enjoyed it at any point a thumbs up on it would be really appreciated and if you really enjoyed it then also make sure you subscribe and activate that notification bell that would also help me a ton and I'll see you guys in the next one.